Okay, guys, so if I were to ask you to guess what was my dream car back in my youth, well, most of you would probably answer BMW E39. And yes, I have admired the E39 for a long, long time, but my younger self has always viewed uh, the E39 at that time, right, when I was in my early 20s as something of an unobtainable car, scary to maintain. Uh, yeah, so I never felt that, you know, it was a car that I can aspire to at that time. Uh, those of you who have watched more of my videos will recall that, you know, I, I once said before, I grew up as a Mitsubishi fanboy and you may guess, ah, his dream car must be the Mitsubishi Evo. Well, once again, uh, my humble younger self would have viewed that as unobtainable as well. So, as the college going me, as the fresh grad version of me, at that time, viewed the, viewed the world through the windscreen of a Proton Vira. Would you believe it? The Honda Civic was something of a aspirational yet attainable you know uh, goal for me right I distinctly remember you know as I began my first job I told myself that you know once I once I earn a good income the car that I would reward myself with is a Honda Civic and that was even before they uh, Honda came out with the Civic FD it was the time of the somewhat underwhelming uh, Civic ES and you see the thing is this you know for many years Honda has carefully cultivated a somewhat unbreakable reputation of the Civic you know it's like the Civic I've, is something of Honda's a game car it's like the 3 Series for BMW, the Santa Fe for Hyundai. The Civic is the car that Honda always, always puts its best foot forward. And that is why, you know, even now, as consumer trends move toward a preference for SUVs, you know, the, the middle class people, every, every, buyers in every segment generally, move towards SUVs. The Civic is still able to maintain a strong market share. Look at it this way, uh, in amongst the in the Japanese C segment, uh, you know, market, only the Civic is still being locally assembled. The Corolla is CBU, Mazda three is CBU, Nissan gave up on the Silphi. So the Civic is the only one, only. Uh, C-segment Japanese model in Malaysia that is still locally assembled and the reason of that for that is because Honda is still selling a good number of, of these cars in the Malaysian market to justify the investment for local assembly so the Civic's popularity and appeal is enduring and it transcends generations and which is why you know even though I no longer dream of owning a Civic there are plenty of people out there who look at who can look at any generation of the Civic and say you know this is the car I want to move up to you know from right now my my V or my city or my Vios the next upgrade that a lot of people are eyeing is the Civic all right and that brings me to the Civic FB that I am driving here. Now, this Civic FB is, I would call it the forgotten modern Civic. Because why? You see, when the Civic FD came out in 2005, that car shocked the market with its wow factor, you know, with the digital cluster, uh, you know, that, that, that advanced design that till today, think about it, it is, a, a one and a half decade old car but the Civic FD still looks like you know a modern car that would be able to command sales in the present 
then Honda replaced it with the Civic FB and you know at that time when we reviewed it as a new car it looked very obvious that well Honda was in a pinch uh, economy wasn't good at that time and I think it was that time after the the Japanese tsunami so budget was really tight at Honda and it showed the Civic FB um, had a few cost-cutting steps from the FD. The most noticeable uh, example would be the rear suspension has been downgraded from double wishbones to just multi-links, but it's still better than the torsion beam you get in the Corolla at that time. So the FB came in as a relatively underwhelming entry. Not only that, the successor of the FB, the Civic FC, once again came up with that big jump in wow factor, you know, 1.5 turbo engine, once again that expressive styling, right? So it left the FB in kind of a no man's land in terms of appeal. And, and, and people, when they buy used Civics, it's either those who, who, who dream, who still want to go with the Civic FD or they go with the Civic FC. The FB is like, nobody, nobody bats an eyelid on this, in this car. And you can look at the used car values, okay? You see, at the 50,000 ringgit segment, between the FD and the FB, there is an overlap in value so there are some last batch civic fds that are commanding a higher price than the fb but when you look at the transition from fb to fc there's a clear gap right the most expensive civic fb that i can find on muda is a good seven to eight grand cheaper than the cheapest civic fc yeah, so, so therein, lots, we, we see where the Civic FB sits in respect to its, its lineage. And yeah, so it is, I would say, one of the least liked Civics in memory. But is it a bad car? Well, it would be very unfair to say that because when you view the Civic FB in isolation, it is actually not bad. You see, for about 40 to 50, max up 60,000 ringgit, the price of a MyV, you get a full size C segment sedan, 1.8 2 liter engine. Forget the hybrid, but don't look at the hybrid, just look at the 1.8 or 2 liter models. And you have, you know, a pretty decent and comfortable car. All right, it is still a class competitive vehicle. It was still comparatively a better car than the Toyota Corolla Altis of the same generation. And Honda didn't, didn't take away all the good things from the FD. All right, you still have this very modern, you know, two-tier instrument cluster that, that they ditched, you know, after this generation. They went back to a more conventional setup with the Civic FC. Right, you still get all independent suspension, which is not a given in the C segment anymore. Okay, and handling of the Civic is by all means still decent. And now I'm driving this 1.8 liter version, which is the base model. All right, I am still having good enough performance, all right, to cut and scythe my way through urban traffic. So by all measures, if you are shopping with a 50-60k budget, the FB is worth a second look. And even if you prefer the Civic FD, just remember this, the FD now is about the same price as an FB, but it's a cash buy. If you need to take a loan, Civic FB still qualifies for a loan. Now, the beautiful thing about the uh, shopping for this era Punya Civic is that whether you buy a 1.8 or a 2-litre model, performance-wise, you are not found wanting. You see, like right now, I'm driving this on NPE, keeping up with traffic, right? 100 kilometers per hour, 
and I'm only needing 2000 RPMs on the clock. So even though you may say that, oh, the uh, five-speed automatic transmission is out of date, but the gearing chosen is appropriate. It's spot on. It is good enough for your day-to-day -day use. And remember, this is the last Civic that still had a torque converter automatic transmission because after this, the Civic went the way of the CVT. Now, one of the biggest uh, criticisms of Hondas from this era is uh, the sound insulation and there's no getting around it. This car can be a bit noisy on the move, but uh, there is nothing, a trip to KL Auto wouldn't solve. And uh, now coming back to the Civic here, I mean, I have to say the overall performance of this car is good enough for day-to-day -day use. Um, all right, it's it's nippy enough, it's zippy enough. So anybody of you, if you are coming from a Proton, a Pro Duo, or a B segment sedan, this car still represents a viable upgrade. And if you are a first time buyer, you can still consider this as well over a brand new Myvi or a brand new Persona or Proton Iris because you are putting yourself one segment higher than you you would otherwise go for and remember this is a civic so depreciation is probably very gentle on your wallet put it this way if you spend the same amount on on a myvi five years down the road when you resell chances are the civic here will hold its value better than your brand new myvi or persona or iris you know whatever new car that you can think of because remember with a new car all right you you face depreciation right off the block with a used car the first owner has already bought the brunt of the depreciation so you are taking it, this car in at the point where its depreciation is at its most gentle okay so this example that you see here this is a 2015 model Right, it's a facelifted version, which you can identify, well, very subtle cue from the uh, grille, the front grille, all right? The pre-facelift models have uh, horizontal slats. This one has this honeycomb design, as well as this uh, chrome strip below, okay? And also there's another chrome strip down here at the lower edge of the bumper. Right, so this is the 1.8 liter version that I'm showing you here. So the 1.8 liter model gets uh, halogen projector headlamps, still respectable looking, or you go to the two liter model, you get xenons. All right, uh, the 1.8 liter model here has 17 inch uh, alloy wheels, whereas the two liter model gets bigger 18s. Hey, no, sorry, these are 16s. The 1.8 here gets 16 inch wheels, the two liter model gets 18s. Uh, signal lights here on the fender, the two liter model I believe has them on the side mirror. Now uh, you get keyless entry, okay, even on the 1.8, so this is a plus point. Okay, so to lock, you press the button, but to unlock, put your hand here, touch, and open the door. Okay, so on the driver's side, we check on the passenger side. Passenger side, uh, yeah, well, not bad. Passenger side also has keyless entry as well, so this is great. All right, and you come to the back. Now, from the back, the uh, facelift and pre-facelift Civic FB looks almost the same. Same head, taillight design, similar bumper design. All right, so here's the 1.8 badge here. Open up the boot. Let me just show you the boot. Now, this example here has a reverse camera, aftermarket reverse camera fitted into it. Quite unfortunately, uh, Honda at this time only offered reverse camera in the Civic FB with the two liter Navi model. That's a special range topping model with touch screen. All right, so uh, there's the boot here, the seat back is fixed. Underneath here, you've got a space saver spare tire. Boot, quite big. Okay, I can't remember the exact measurements, but it's a, it's a typical C-segment sized boot. Right? But I think you get a bigger boot in the Civic to be, in the city to be honest. Then again, uh, this car does have multi-link rear suspension, so boot space naturally is a compromise. Okay, so now we check out the interior. This is the 1.8, you get fabric seats inside. The 2.0 liter model gets black leather. 
all right uh not a problem for me i actually prefer fena the bright colors th this light colors actually make the interior feel more spacious and airy got i'm 170 centimeters tall so i've got about maybe two fingers of headroom above me lean here is good i've got good thigh support and in front here great uh leg room knee room as well okay so the armrest here with two molded cup holders isofix mounts here quite buried quite deep inside so uh, and it's tight here okay so uh, in some cases you do need to, when you install the isofix chassis you need to press the, against the cushion all right um now by today's standards we expect the c-segment car to have rear air conveyors but bear in mind the civic fb came from a time just before that feature became popular although quite ironically during this period honda actually had rear air con blowers for the range topping variants of the city so let's check out the door card so you have a nice two-tone color here okay the design is is pretty so so lah. and the material selection here you can see it's hard plastic hard plastic so this this is also a time where honda uh, as I will show you later in from the front Gave you distinctly average cabin materials not poor But not plush either distinctly average Okay, uh, the door cut here is rather short, but still good enough for your Passenger here to maybe drop a mobile phone or a mobile device here. Okay, and of course the, the inserts here the, the fabric inserts here now we come inside to the front cabin okay so here's the front door card and uh well the door the the door pocket here is rather short for the front door okay and so the basic you know the two tone the two the two tier instrument cluster from the civic fd is carried over uh but here you've got start stop button all right and uh the way to wheel the two-tier instrument cluster is to have the steering wheel below the speedometer but above the tachometer okay so this is this is honestly i think uh this is still a unique part of the civic if you were if i were if, uh, if you were to ask me okay and uh, yeah so you have the fuel consumption reading here fuel gauge over there Okay, uh, no temperature readout, but uh, this is the time where you have the uh, indicator light to warn of engine overheating or being too cold. So right here, there's this extra screen which you control by pressing this button. So you can switch to show the clock, to show your entertainment, or to show your fuel consumption. All right. Uh, now this touch screen this is aftermarket okay uh let's just so this is you wouldn't get this one is installed by the current owner and uh it's, it's currently nobody uses this this gps map anymore so this is this has to be quite an old set okay i, it, I don't think it's even android it's not even an, it's not even android uh it's something that you may consider to replace or not but uh, the 1.8 at this time did not have a touch screen the 2 liter model has the option of putting a navy screen but the 1.8 did not and uh, this owner has also installed a reverse camera okay now interestingly coming down here so this is the uh, this is the, the trip the sorry this is the climate control section okay and uh, down here you've got 12 volt socket and an aux jack no usb at this point in time uh but you see here is where we sh it, it really showcases this honda all right in that once i get once again i've said the material selection very average okay this kind of plastic here this is it's not a pleasant plastic to touch but one thing we cannot fault is the allocation of space so you have this nice useful tray here big enough to drop your phone your keys and it's rubberized so if you put your keys here it doesn't slide about okay making noise similarly this this center part here this is lidded okay and you can slide this this uh, cup holder partition here all right varying according to the size of your cup or you can slide it away to make it a full 
compartment so here are oh, actually got USB port so there's a USB port here okay and this is very interesting so you see here you put this USB here and there's a slot here to neatly chuck it away okay right here glove box and uh, yeah so it's the so this is hard plastic hard plastic but textured okay let me just show you the texture on the surfacing so it's it's a nice looking texture lah, but it's just that it's not very does not feel very premium to the touch if i'm to be honest but yeah um i looking at this i can understand why people who come from the civic fd all right coming to this uh feeling a bit underwhelmed by what they see but i would say that in isolation uh this is still a decent cabin well thought out ergonomics you see this was a this was a time i remember that um whenever i got into a honda test car and this was true of any honda test car uh there is that sense you know of instant familiarity in that I, it never took me more than five or ten minutes to make myself feel at home in a Honda cabin because that was how intuitive it is that Honda designed the uh, the cabin of of the of their cars. So the Civic here, okay, is uh, is another example of that. All right. So this particular example of the Civic FB 1.8 that I'm showing you here. This example is for sale. Uh, the Civic right now is currently in the custody of Fat Car Sandrian Brahat here in Kajang. And uh, this car has now received a full polish, full three-step polish from the Evo Club car wash team. So compared to earlier footages in the video, you will see that there's more shine, more clarity to the paintwork that wasn't there before. The asking price for this car is 55,800 ringgit and uh, you will be getting the car well on top of what you are seeing here before the car is delivered to you uh, Evo Club Car Wash will undertake to give this car a full enduro package so you have the engine washed we have the interior clean carpet extract uh, carpets the fabric seats all undergo a full extraction cleaning meaning that the car comes to you fresh and in almost brand new condition all right so uh yeah if any of you guys are interested to view this particular example of the civic fb come over to fat car syndrome berhad and uh check it out all right so until my next video take care guys stay safe and i'll see you soon